Good afternoon, parents. My name is Keith Glock. I'm a counselor here at Montgomery High School and want to welcome you all to our college series presentation on the college application process for the class of 2024. This is not going to be a theory-based conversation by any stretch of the imagination. It is very much a nuts and bolts. Uh, here is what the students need to do in order to make this process work so that things like transcripts, letters of recommendation, the school profile are delivered to colleges on time uh, by their application due date and that the entire process runs smoothly. So without further ado, uh, let me bring this to you now. So in this presentation, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to talk about what the role of the student is, what the role of the counselor is, and what the role of the teacher is. I'm going to show you exactly how students are going to accomplish these tasks. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we understand where most of the hot button topics lie, so I'm going to address those in advance. And then certainly there's going to be time for any questions that remain, and you can actually drop those into the chat if you are watching this on YouTube. If you are watching it embedded in the guidance website, uh, just click on the little YouTube uh, sign on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and that'll take you over to the actual YouTube site where you'll be able to see the comments section. Uh, we can answer some of those live for you as we go, and if it's something that may be a little bit too long, uh, then we'll come back at the end of this and answer it for you on camera. So uh, the order of operations, so to speak, as we go through this is pretty important. And the reason why we want you to complete this parent point of view uh, and have your child complete the student brag sheet is that as we go through this process in terms of uh, linking our Naviance and our common application, which I'm obviously going to show you, um, Automatic emails get sent from time to time in this process, uh, and the first person who is going to receive an automatic email notification that this process has been initiated by the student is their high school counselor. So uh, when that happens, as counselors, we then uh, go in and begin to start writing the letter of recommendation. And the first place that we go is to the student brag sheet and parent point of view. And if those items are not complete, uh, I am at a standstill and I'm not going to be able to write that letter of recommendation. So uh, we really want that to happen. I'm going to show you where this is in Naviance once we log in uh, in a few minutes. So after we have done, uh, or actually, you know, here's a pro tip before we move on. Um, I want you to not type directly into the web browser as parents when you are answering those parent point of view questions. Uh, we suggest that you answer them in a Word document or a Google Doc and then paste them into the web browser all at one time. If you answer them in the web browser uh, and you take too long, which is a shorter amount of time within that program than you think, uh, if you go to hit the submit button, it will not save any of your work and it will log you out. So you will lose everything that you just did and obviously we don't want that to happen. Um, another thing that uh, may happen here is if you, know, you went in and filled this out and then you wanna go uh, make some updates to it or anything like that. Uh, it's not going to say complete anywhere. It's just going to say, you know, in progress. Uh, it doesn't ever say that. And the reason is because uh, you're always going to be able to make changes. So it's never technically complete. So don't worry about that. Okay, so now here are some nuts and bolts. Uh, we're going to create a common application account if we haven't had one. And let's talk about what the common application is first before we even move forward. Um, the common application is quite simply a website uh, that hundreds and hundreds of colleges throughout the country uh, take uh, as the standard application. It is a wonderful time to be a high school senior because the common application is more robust right now than it has ever been, meaning more schools take it, including Rutgers. For the first time ever, uh, Rutgers accepts the common application, which is wonderful for our students in particular because we know that Rutgers is the school that our students apply to more than any other school each year. Um, it has been that way since I've been here, which is 17 years, and it's actually, quite frankly, not even close. So um, the uh, previous to this year, uh, the Rutgers application itself was um, pretty lengthy, and there were a lot of things that students had to do, but now right within the common application. So um, we love that about it. So let me get uh, right to it and show you uh, how we are going to accomplish this because we're going to try to marry our Naviance and our common application accounts so that this way things like transcripts, student brag sheet, 
letters of recommendation, are able to be sent by us and by the teachers directly through Naviance, and they will land at their destination. So, how will we first get to Naviance? Because we obviously need to be logged into both Naviance and the Common Application in order to make this process work. So if you're on the high school website and you mouse over departments here, as you see, uh, you will just click on the counseling and guidance portion of the page. Scroll down a little bit here, and on the left-hand side, you're going to see Naviance. You are indeed a student. So we are going to log in here using our credentials. Okay. So now, and as I promised to show you where the student brag sheet and parent point of view were before we match anything, uh, if you just click on your initials here at the top and then you were to click surveys from your school, you will see that uh, the parent point of view is right here and the student brag sheet is right down here. So no worries on that. So we'll take us back to our Naviance home screen. So we're logged into Naviance, that's wonderful. And we're also going to log into our common application account. If you don't have a common application account, you can just click right here and create an account very simple like you would with anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my common application account. And if you've never been in before, uh, you're not gonna have a college at all here in your dashboard. So you would simply just go to the college search up here on your tabs and then you can go in and search for any school that you want, and then you would just click on the Add button here once the school comes up in your search. So once you do add a school, at least from your college search, it's gonna populate itself here on the left-hand side in this gray toolbar. My suggestion would be that as we go through this particular portion of the process, that students not add 38 schools into this, side, this list at this point. Uh, I would suggest only adding the schools which you're definitely certain that you're going to apply to at this point in time during the process. And the reason for that is once we accomplish this first task uh, and we match our Naviance and our common application account, um, Na uh, Naviance is going to be populated in the colleges I'm applying to section with every school that is in this My Colleges list. Um, and it's much easier to add schools later than it is to have them all be imported now and then have to delete them later. So my suggestion is uh, the smaller number, the better. But let's say you have uh, five, six, seven schools listed here on the left-hand side. They'll all be listed one right on top of the other in a collapsed uh, manner here as, if, as you see TCNJ is in mine. So you're gonna click on this arrow to uncollapse uh, the school and it does not matter which school you click on uh, to do the next step that we're going to go through. Once you do this uh, one step for any of the schools, it will populate across all of the schools. So we are going to go ahead and click here on Recommenders and FERPA. FERPA stands for Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. And basically what we're doing when we complete this release authorization is just uh, we're giving Naviance and the Common Application permission uh, to send some sensitive material over the internet. So if you click on complete that, you're just gonna see the first set of instructions here uh, and you're gonna click, I understand that, and then you're gonna continue. You're gonna acknowledge that uh, you see that and that's gonna bring up a, a second part of the toolbar. And now here is where uh, things in terms of vocabulary get a little bit difficult, so I'm gonna explain it to you. Uh, the choice that students have now is they either are going to waive their right to see their letters of recommendation from teachers or they're going to not waive their right to see letters of recommendation from teachers. We are going to make a very strong suggestion to you that you select this top one and waive your right to view your teacher letters of recommendation. Why do we say that? First is because once you complete this FERPA form, there is no undoing it. We cannot click to undo it you can't call Common Application and have them undo it. They are not able to do that. So this is a one and done process. Why would we tell you to waive your right to view recommendations from teachers? Uh, even if you're sitting there and saying, you know, hey, I'm a little bit curious about what might be written in there. The first reason is uh, that 
there are some teachers at Montgomery High School who would choose to no longer write a letter of recommendation for you if you do not waive your right uh, to see that recommendation. Uh, a second item here is even if you were to select this that you don't waive your right to see your letters of recommendation, it's not like they become available to you right away. You would actually have to be attending, matriculating at a school, go down to the uh, admissions office and request that letter of, those letters of recommendation and uh, there'll be a little bit of a process there. And then by the time that's all said and done, you know, a good period of time will pass and then perhaps you'll be uh, supplied with those letters of recommendation. But students uh, by then are really not going to care because we're already going to be in college. Uh, lastly, uh, something that we've heard from college counselors over the last two years or so is that when, when they see students checking this, not waiving their right, they're not viewing it as a curiosity piece anymore. They're viewing it as a skepticism piece. And I don't really think that that's anything that we need to be worried about here at Montgomery because, uh, quite frankly, if a teacher was not comfortable writing a letter of recommendation for a student, they would just tell them that they uh, are not prepared to do that. Uh, so they would have told them no. So I don't think this is an issue. So again, students can choose whichever they want, but we give a strong recommendation to waive their right uh, to see the letters of recommendation. So you're gonna understand uh, here, you're gonna sign and you're gonna date, and then you just click save and close, and then that will uh, complete this portion uh, of the process. So that part's very simple, no issue there. So now let's assume that those things are done. The next thing we need to do is actually on the Naviance side of things, we need to match our, and match marry, whatever word you want to use, uh, our Naviance account with our Common Application account. So all you're going to do to accomplish that is you're going to click on Colleges here at the top of the page, and then you're going to go to Colleges I am applying to, and then you're going to click that. And you will see here at the top in big red letters, uh, it looks like you're not matched yet, so you're just going to go ahead and click Match. When you do that, it opens up your Common Application login page. So you just go ahead and put in your credentials and log in. Agree that you would like to match those, and then go down here and click Connect. So no problem there. Once you've done that, now all of a sudden, everything is wonderful and your accounts are married. Now, uh, once that happens, is this red box up here will turn green. Um, so then you'll be uh, aware that everything is fine. You'll see that uh, you know we have a couple of schools already listed here in my colleges I'm applying to, and we'll uh, say that that's because they were auto-populated in from my my colleges list. So something that does not happen when the colleges are auto migrated from your my colleges list on the common application into this colleges i'm applying to tab is there's no transcript request attached uh, to any of them so that before we do anything else you're just going to go over here and request transcripts for all these schools we're going to request initial transcripts because quite frankly it's not the mid-year yet <laughs> uh, and we don't have mid-year grades so we're just requesting initial transcripts there'll be a time later in the year for students to request mid-year transcripts you know, it's going to ask you which schools you'd like to uh, request those transcripts for, and I'll select them both. You just click Done right there, and then uh, a transcript request will be attached to these schools. So when you do this and you match these accounts uh, and you request these transcripts, the requesting of the transcripts is the first thing that sends the automatic email to our counselors to say, okay, Keith Glock has started the college application process and wants me to go in, write a letter of recommendation, uh, and upload that along with their transcript and the school profile and send it to the schools that they have in this colleges I'm applying to uh, section. So what if uh, you do this process and now there's only two schools in here, but you want to add more, either because uh, you just didn't add them initially, or maybe they don't take the common application, so they didn't auto-migrate. No problem. You just click here uh, to add a school in here. Maybe we'll look for Montclair State University. We'll do that. How am I applying? I'm going to submit it via the common application. Uh, are you submitting test optional? You get to choose that. Uh, have I submitted my application yet? Yes or no. Uh, and now you have a, an option to either add your application or add and request transcripts. 
it's very important that every time students add a school to their colleges I'm applying to list that they click add and request transcript here um, because that is again what will send an automatic notification to the counselor that says hey we really need you to go in and get this material sent without clicking add and request here uh, no notification will ever get sent to the counselors so there's no way that we would know that that is a school that we, you are applying to and that transcripts or letters of recommendation need to get sent there. Again, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, the, the timeline of this process is actually pretty important um, because we need you to do this in terms of building this list before we go to our next step. Um, and now that we have done that step, let me show you what the next one is. We've done that step there. We've done that step there. So teacher letters of recommendation is the next piece of this process. The reason why uh, requesting teacher letters is contingent upon building the college list is something I'm going to show you now. So if we are in our Naviance accounts, there's two ways to get to the teacher letters of recommendation page. You can either scroll down here to the bottom of this colleges I'm applying to screen and click on letters of recommendation section or from any screen in Naviance just click colleges and then go down here and click letters of recommendation. It will open up a new screen and you'll see that I don't have currently any letter of recommendation requests in my file so let's go ahead and add one. So once I click to add one, you'll see that the only two schools that I'm able to add are Stockton and the College of New Jersey because those are the two schools that are in my colleges I'm applying to section. So requesting teacher letters is only possible once that colleges I'm applying to section is filled out. If you request teacher letters now and then go ahead and add other schools to that colleges I'm applying to tab at a later date, you also need to make sure that you come back into this screen and submit a teacher request for that school. So let's see which teacher I would like to use. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick Mr. Belusu because we love Mr. Belusu. And I would like him to send a letter to both Stockton and the College of New Jersey. And you should go ahead and type in an easy note here of thanks uh, for Mr. Belusu. And then you can just come down here and submit a request. By clicking this Submit Request button, uh, Mr. Belusu now gets an automatic email that says, oh, Keith Glock is requesting a teacher letter of recommendation. Uh, I guess I should go in and upload that letter of recommendation and send it. So let's get into the weeds a little bit here about uh, teacher letters, type, frequency, all of that stuff. If you see here uh, next to Stockton in the College of New Jersey, both of them say that they do not require any letters of recommendation in order for their process to be complete. However, they will allow both two or three letters of recommendation depending on the school that we're talking about. Our recommendation is that students are not asking more than two teachers at Montgomery High School for letters of recommendation. The reason why we don't want you to ask more than two teachers is twofold. First, because no school in the country that we know of is going to require more than two. The second reason is because our teachers often set quotas for themselves in terms of the number of letters of recommendation that they will write in any given year. So if their internal number is 25, when the 26th student comes to them and says, hey, I, you know, I'm hoping you can write a letter of recommendation for me, they might say, no, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm at my quota. So if we have students who are requesting four and five letters of recommendation, um, that may potentially be taking up spots from a student who needs that teacher to be one of their primary one or two. So please, no more than two teacher letters of recommendation from Montgomery High School teachers. But you may be wondering if you, know, you see a school like TCNJ that says three allowed recommendations, and there may be schools that say you know, four allowed or five allowed. How does that work? So let's say that you got your two teacher letters of recommendation from Montgomery High School teachers, and then you also have an outside coach or something, your dance coach, say, uh, has agreed to write a letter of recommendation for you. That is where that third or fourth letter might come in handy. 
how do we make that possible? Obviously, we, we know that we have requested the two teacher letters from Montgomery teachers here in Naviance. But within the common application itself, there is a section that says invite recommenders. That is where anyone who does not work in the Montgomery Township School District, that's where you would add that person so that they can electronically upload that letter directly into your common application file. So I, can't, I have to be very clear on this for logistical reasons that Naviance is for Montgomery High School or Montgomery Township employees. The common application invite recommenders is for people outside of Montgomery Township schools. The reason why there is that distinction is quite logistical. If a Montgomery Township school district employee were to get that request from the common application and not Naviance, and they were to accept that invitation from the common application, it would lock them out of their Naviance account in terms of its capability of sending letters of recommendation, not only for that student for which they are accepting, but for any student. And to undo that process is quite an arduous task. They have to call common application, they have to call Naviance. It takes a long time and not something that we wanna do. So um, if perhaps your child was an overachiever and uh, they went into their common application and invited a Montgomery Township School District employee for a letter of recommendation uh, from the common app, they should go in and delete that and make sure that it's only non-Montgomery Township employees in that common application invite recommenders section. One other thing to note about this is that there's going to be some schools for students that say one required and one allowed. And that's the reason why we add these schools in individually and we're lucky that Naviance is smart enough to be able to say if, let's say TCNJ was a school that had one required and one allowed here, uh, for me to be able to say, you know, Mr. Belusu is gonna be the one that I want to write that letter and not maybe my second recommender um, so this way the wrong letter doesn't get sent to the wrong school in terms of your teacher preference and uh, you know what that school is requiring. So let's go back in here. Let's take some stock of what we've done so far. Uh, you all have completed the student brag sheet and parent point of view, which has armed your counselor with the information needed to write a letter of recommendation from the counselor. You have matched your Naviance and your common application accounts, so now we have the ability to send transcripts, letters of recommendation, the school profile, electronically directly to schools. And you've also requested teacher letters of recommendation within Naviance. Only thing left to do at this point uh, is for students to complete the application. So the things that we have done in this presentation, the things that I just recapped for you, these things must be done 15 school days prior to the first application deadline that a student is applying to. I can't be clear enough about this to say that the application itself does not, does not need to be complete in order to do the things that we have gone through here in this presentation. And the application itself does not need to be complete in 15 school days prior to the first application deadline. The only thing that we need done 15 school days prior to the application deadline are the steps that we detailed in this presentation. Why do we need that done within that 15 school day timeline? And that is because um, many schools throughout the country, many high schools throughout the country, uh, submit those transcripts, teacher letters of recommendation, after uh, the student's application deadline. And the colleges are okay with that. Um, but we would prefer at Montgomery to not have that happen. So if we get all of these logistical steps done within that 15 school day timeline prior to the first application deadline, we can ensure that those things are carefully created and carefully sent uh, properly to all schools before that deadline happens. So how do we know what 15 school days is? We've created a handy chart here for you. You can take a look at it. And we know that you know Georgia Tech probably um, the only school that we really know of that's uh, popular enough for an October 15 deadline for our students. So most of our students, the first thing that this will apply to is any early action November 1 deadlines. Um, and the deadline to have these steps completed is October 11th. Um, so quite some time still to go before students need to have this done. There's no reason to wait until October 11th to get that done. If you can get it done sooner than that, 
uh, that is great because the more time we have as counselors uh, and teachers to get this process rolling, the better. And you know what, before I even talk about the student completing the application and some of the other things that need doing, uh, let me tell you a story about something that's going to happen uh, to most of our students, if not all of our students. Let's say that you are a rule follower and you get all these things done by this October 11th deadline, um, and then you submit the application on, say, October 28th. You may get an email on, like, October 29th or October 30th from the school to which you just applied that says, Thank you for your application. We do not have your high school transcript, letters of recommendation, or the school profile. Please contact your high school counselor. And then your first reaction would be to be very frustrated with us here in the counseling department and say, I, I followed your process. I don't understand what was missing here or what was wrong. I assure you that nothing was wrong. The only thing that would happen in a, in a, a situation like that is that the school didn't match up yet your supporting material from Naviance with their application in the school's computer system. So I know it's going to be a nerve-wracking thing when you get that email, but students have the ability to go into their Naviance account in that colleges I'm applying to list and see were those materials submitted and what date they were submitted on. So if you look in there and you see that the things were submitted, the, all you have to do is just do nothing for a week. This is our advice. And then students, not parents, but students, should then, uh, after a week, pick up the phone, call the college, and say, hey, I received an email from you about a week ago that says you don't have uh, my supporting application material, like my transcript or my letters of recommendation. Would you be able to check your computer system and see if it's there? Because on my end in Naviance, it looks like it is complete. And then they'll ask you to hold for a second, check it out, and they'll tell you, oh, yes, we have it. Thank you. And then they'll check it off. Um, so no reason to worry there if you have done all the steps we've outlined within the process here today. So the last thing that students need to do is complete the actual application. Can't stress enough how if the common application is available that we are recommending that students use the common application. Uh, if a school takes the common application and uh, you do not elect to use the common application, we as counselors and teachers lose the ability to send your supporting materials through Naviance. We actually need to print it out and send it through the U.S. mail, and we know how reliable that can be in 2023. So please, if the Common App is available, use it. Again, the reason why we're so big on the Common Application uh, is because we have that ability to track, see the submission status, see the, uh, whether the, the school received it, did they download it? If so, what's the confirmation code? It's just a, a, a load off of our minds when we use the common application. We love it. Some schools may not accept the common application. We know that. Uh, so in those cases, you're going to have to complete the application directly through that college's own website, through their portal, uh, and then submit. Uh, and then, what, you know, for most of the schools in the country, uh, we still have the ability to send application material through Naviance, even for the schools that don't accept the common application. The only difference is uh, we don't really have the submission status updates the way that we might otherwise want them to be. Um, so no real big issue there. The co coalition application is just another kind of like common app light. Uh, less, many, many, many less schools in the country, uh, many fewer schools in the country accept uh, the coalition application, but uh, you know, there's maybe still be some coalition only schools out there. And if you have to use that application, that's fine as well. Uh, we do have the ability to send documents electronically via Naviance when you apply via the coalition application. Standardized test scores, SATs and ACTs. The counseling department at Montgomery has nothing to do with the sending of SAT or ACT scores. So you have to log into your own college board account or your own ACT account and send those to the schools to which you are applying. It costs money to do that. It's about $12 or $15 at this point. Um, so you'll need a credit card when you go to do that. Uh, our test scores are not on our transcript. And again, we don't even have access to your accounts if we wanted to. Uh, so this is entirely on the student to get done. So let's take a recap here. What are counselor responsibilities within this process? We are going to write a letter of recommendation. We're going to receive that transcript request via Naviance and we are going to upload that letter and that transcript and we are going to send it. 
what are your teachers going to do? Teachers are also going to receive that transcript request via Naviance, and they are going to then upload and send a letter of recommendation. Counselors have no ability to uh, further the process for the teachers. There's a, a kind of the process is walled off on purpose so that the teachers control their own destiny in terms of sending these letters. So if uh, you're looking and you're about a day out from your application deadline uh, and a teacher has not submitted a letter, uh, have the student approach the teacher in person directly um, or get in contact with them in the, you know, the best way possible uh, to remind them that their first application deadline is approaching. Teachers can see that in Naviance, but uh, a reminder in that situation that close to the deadline may not be a bad thing. Uh, again, the one thing that matters most is that a student's application is submitted by the due date. If supporting documentation is received after that, it is not a big deal. Again, we try not to make that happen with the 15 school day rule, but uh, not a huge issue if that is something that happens. Um, this slide here was typically the slide where I gave you the many, many, many instructions about how to fill out the Rutgers application. Um, but again, they're finally on the Common App. Can't be, couldn't be happier about that. Okay, so a couple of more recap items here. Um, I put here that tasks one through seven, the things that we talked about in terms of the brag sheet, matching the application or the common application and Naviance, that they would take about 20 minutes. That's a really liberal uh, interpretation. Um, I would say probably four minutes outside of the student brag sheet. Second bullet here, parents, please never call a, a college on behalf of your child during this application process. Can't tell you enough how much we really, really, really don't want you doing that because uh, the colleges keep track of who is calling and uh, it's kind of a red flag for them if you're calling and not the student to ask a simple question because um, they might think, well, if the parent's calling now, what's gonna happen when the student is here and potentially hits some adversity. Is the parent going to be the one emailing and calling the professor? Or is the parent going to be calling admissions? Um, it's not something that they want. They might see it as a red flag to say, well, is that student really prepared to be at college? I don't know. Next thing we want you to do is follow directions. Uh, we hear from colleges all the... Sorry about our bell system here. Uh, parents, uh, you know, Let's give you a concrete example about what I mean following directions. If we can think back to that letters of recommendation section where you saw for TCNJ zero required letters, but three were allowed. Uh, so let's say that a student has two letters of recommendation uh, from teachers at Montgomery, and then they put their dance teacher in as the third recommender uh, from the common application side. And then, uh, you know, maybe you have two other ones. So you say, well, you know what? It really couldn't hurt. Let me just drop that in the mail. And, you know, if they don't want it, it'll be fine. Let's say TCNJ receives 10,000 applications this year, and every single one of those students were to submit two extra pieces of paper. Just think about what 20,000 pieces of paper physically looks like. They don't want it. They're going to throw it out. They're not going to use it anyway because they don't accept it. So in our conversations with uh, these admissions counselors, we're often hearing from them and they say, why do your students think they know better than us what we want? Please have them submit what we're, we're asking for. Um, so please follow those directions. Now that said, um, we want you to follow directions, but I also don't want you to be an underachiever as a student here. You can read optional as required during this process. So anything that says optional, we really recommend that the students are doing uh, and not leaving those items blank. So now the final bullet that I have here, and these are probably the two things that I feel most strongly about in this process. Um, first is your college essay, and uh, the second is um, the early decision deadline. So let's talk first about the college essay. Let's think about anything we do every day in our lives. If I wake up every day and my routine is that I'm going to get up, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth every day in that order. Toothpaste is here, toothbrush is here. One morning, toothpaste isn't here, but it's over here. I know that that is out of place because it's something I do every day. A normal person who's just brushing their teeth at my sink would, have, would not think anything of it. But 
you might look at that and go, somebody touched my toothpaste because every day I put it here and now someone else has put it over here. Very easy for you to spot when it's part of your process. So many families have, you know, secured the services of a college uh, counselor outside of Montgomery and that's fine, that's great. Um, you know, we endorsing of any help that you, you know, you, know, you can afford to have. Um, but if that college admissions counselor um, in your employee is saying, hey, I will help you with your essay, and that's kind of code for I'm going to write a great portion or if not all of the essay, um, how difficult do you think it is for a college admissions counselor to spot an essay that's written by an adult versus one that's written by a parent? Because they read 10,000 a year. And pretty simple to spot. It's uh, kind of the thing that we hear most from college admissions counselors. Now that said, um, it does not, the, the, college, the college essay does not need to be uh, the space where you show that you can sh do every part of speech that you know, every, you know, use a semicolon here, don't do that. Uh, the main thing that we want students to be in these essays is both interesting and genuine, right from the heart. Talk about whatever it is that you're writing about in a normal way. If you go back and read that essay over and you're like, man, this is kind of boring. My suggestion would be to start over. Um, we want the admissions counselors reading from the top to the bottom. The last thing I'll say about the college essay, do not allow your children to use AI to help them write their essay. Colleges have already told us they have banded together and they are using the services of their own AI to scan essays for AI. It's kind of like cheating on the test if they catch you kind of going to get thrown in the deny pile. Okay, so really please write from the heart and write um, and how that have the, the students be the ones writing that essay. The last thing here um, after we talk about this uh, essay is the early decision deadline. I'm going to come back to me here um, when I talk about this. So what the thing that we have the biggest problem divorcing the students of is the notion that it is easier to get in to a school during the early decision period than it is during any other application deadline for that school. And they are adherent to the percentage of admission in the early decision period relative to every other deadline that the school has. Mr. Glock, 66% in the early decision period versus 9% in every other deadline. I, obviously, I assure you, it is not easier to get in in the early decision period than it is compared to every other deadline. Because if you believe that this statistical piece in terms of the 66% admission rate in early decision, if you believe that's meaningful, then you must also believe that they change the admission standard for early decision and they lower it. I promise you, the standard is the standard. It is not lowered in the early decision period. So you may be asking yourself, well, how do you ac account for this humongous statistical difference from the early decision acceptance rate to the every other decision acceptance rate? And it's quite simple. Every college in the country receives the vast majority of its applications from deadlines other than early decision. So we're talking about a much smaller applicant pool for each school. And within that much smaller applicant pool, we have all the 100% admits, all the recruited athletes, the five students the science department uh, is you know, allowed to give full scholarships to, the children of faculty, the other special cases, the band student that they have recruited. All of those students' applications have already been reviewed before the application process even began. Those applications are received, they are stamped as admitted, and they're moved into the accepted pile. So when we talk about that large number of 100% admits combined with the smaller application pool, that is the reason for that statistical anomaly. There's that old saying, there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics.
We can make statistics look however we want. And for the schools, it is to their benefit that you're applying in the early decision period because they want the most the, as many of the most qualified students applying in that situation as they can because, quite frankly, they don't need to offer you any financial aid once you get in. They're going to look at your FAFSA. They might look at the CSS profile if they make you fill that out uh, and say, you know, hey, pay full price. We understand that you have a whole bunch of assets. Sell some of them or take a loan. We don't really care about your liquidity after you have to pay your bills. We know what your income is and we know what your assets are. So therefore, you have to pay that full price uh, for our school. Sad but true reality uh, of the process. So this presentation, along with a college application packet that we have created, have been uploaded to your child's guidance of class of 2024 Google Classroom. We shared that uh, code with them, and I will do so again here in a minute. Um, in that packet, there is a checklist of uh, things that they have to do, which is basically recapping this presentation. And there are also frequently asked questions on the last page. Really encourage everyone to utilize that FAQ section. Just read it. It's uh, questions that we know are on the application that students might otherwise not know. Uh, number of students in the senior class, uh, counselor's phone numbers, what is my official title, our CEEB code. All, all of those items are in that frequently asked questions page. So please take note of that uh, FAQ. This is the 2024 Google Classroom code. Uh, and I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning into this presentation today. Uh, and uh, hope everyone has a wonderful application process season. We can't wait to work with all of you and your children as we go through. And best of luck.